Hello and welcome to this video. Today I will be talking about full interaction maps, or better known as FIMS, in particular how it works, and I will show you examples and applications of how you can use this tool in your work and research. The million structures that are included within the database are used for deriving knowledge. From over a million structures, we can generate a huge range of statistics on the geometry and interaction preferences for these structures. ISOSTAR uses a data library of intermolecular geometry or interaction preferences. So it uses the wealth of interaction information that is in the CSD to show the 3D characteristics of an interaction between functional group pairs as shown in the figures to the right. It will help in assessing the most likely interaction geometry based on experimental evidence or experimental data that is within the database. If a molecule is broken down into fragments and the preference of interactions for each functional group is assessed based on the methodology shown in the previous slide, we would be able to map each fragment in the molecule and for multiple probe types, then combine these together and get what we called a full interaction map. So the figure below shows an example where each functional group in the molecule has been modeled separately with ISOSTAR and all of these are combined to give us the full interaction maps, um, better known as FIMS. Full interaction maps shows the interaction preferences of all the functional groups in your molecule at a click of a button based on the data that is distilled from the CSD. It allows you to assess whether the interaction preferences of your functional groups are satisfied by an actual interaction in your crystal structure which may suggest something about the stability of your structure. And if you have more than one crystal form, that could be more stable. Additional details on the exact um, methodology and the idea behind FIMS is linked in the paper below. In this slide, I'm showing an, an example of the full interaction maps that is relevant to halogen bonding. So studying the halogenated benzoic acid the interaction maps around the carboxylic acid group are consistent across the series. The region around the halogen, however, varies depending on the element. If we're looking at the iodo and the brom derivatives, it indicates that the propensity of these molecules to form halogen bonds is higher. In contrast, the chloro and the fluoro derivatives show little or no acceptor propensity opposite to the halogen correlating with the known behavior of organic chlorine and fluorine. The hydrophobic propensity region above and below the phenyl rings shows an increase for fluoroderivative, highlighting the preference of fluorinates to stack with hydrocarbons. The FIMS can be used in multiple applications, and I'm going to be showing three applications for that. So starting with um, the polymorphism, I'm showing an example of sulfathiazole, which is a compound that is well studied with, with regards to its polymorphic behavior. There are five different known polymorphs for sulfathiazole. We can use the full interaction maps to assess the match between the interaction preferences and observed interaction in each form. This allows us to identify signs of um, stability versus metastability. For form number five, all strong interaction peaks are satisfied by relevant interactions. For form number one, it is noticeable that one of the interactions is well outside the interaction map peak, which is a sign of metastability. That matches what is known experimentally. The most thermodynamically stable form is believed to be form number five, while one is the form that is the least stable. An example from an industrial context. Um, I'm showing here crizotinib, which is a Pfizer drug used for treating non-small cell lung cancer. The um, 
established screening methods suggested no alternative crystal forms. And that was further confirmed using FIMS. So full interaction maps show good packing arrangement and it confirms that another polymorph is not likely, which um, proves more evidence that no further screening should be required unless the expert would think otherwise. For co-crystallization, I'm showing examples here on um, phenolic acid, polyphenols, and vitamins, and how the FIMS are generated for these. Phenolic acids, um, usually the carboxylic acid group dominates the interactions. It often forms dimers, and the OH groups are available for binding. Uh, for polyphenols, uh, there isn't a dominating group. There are a lot of donor preferences. Um, they are usually seen in solvated forms, primarily hydrates. For vitamins, actually it's case by case basis for vitamins, so it depends on the molecule, but it's more likely to see specific patterns such as the riboflavin adenine structure. A more solid example of co-crystallization is probably the amgen molecule that we see here on the screen. Um, it was observed to have problematic solubility. It was highly insoluble in water. And co-crystals or looking for co-crystals was a way of modifying the physical chemical properties, in particular, solubility. The full interaction maps can be used to assess or to help with the co-former design through the hotspot analysis. So checking which co-former would satisfy these interactions in the suggested um, hotspots. The sorbic acid form has a, had a high aqueous solubility and it does form interactions exactly where the interaction maps suggest. More details are always linked in the paper that is shown at the bottom of the screen. Betulinic acid um, is also an interesting case where it's a naturally occurring um, and plant derivative compound. It's been studied with relation to a number of areas of activity, including um, anti-tumor, anti-HIV, anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, and anti-malarial effects. Uh, the confirmation of this structure is highly inflexible. Based on the CSD data, we can expect the full interaction maps to help on the preferred interactions and uh, provide an idea of the solvation status of that specific compound. Just like types of molecular intermolecular interactions like hydrogen bonding, FIMS can be applied to halogen bonding. On this slide, we see a molecule that has a halogen bonding ability. And by looking at the interaction maps, it is obvious that this molecule is um, a self-complementary molecule by nature. And that is one of the closest applications to the topic we are discussing in that in that specific forum. I'm gonna wrap the presentation up with the conclusions. Um, the Cambridge Structural Database contains more than a million structure now, and it provides a wealth of intermolecular interactions. The full interaction maps provide an easy way to extract relevant data for your whole molecule at a click of a button. It's powerful, easy to use visual tool on top of, of the analysis, and it's applicable to a wide range of solid form problems. The full interaction maps is available with CSD materials, CSD discovery, and CSD enterprise licenses. For further information, or if you have any questions about um, FIMS, please follow us on the website or reach out to us. The links to this material will be in the description of this video. And thank you for listening. Anyone 